Are you ever frustrated when you go to a website's pricing page and they have something like advanced permissions with a big check mark next to it? That drives me nuts. What do they mean by advanced permissions? Because what two different vendors mean about how they handle permissions can be radically different. In this video, we're going to talk about why NoLoco is one of the tools we often turn to when we have clients who say, I really need better advanced handling of permissions. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're a NoLoco implementation partner. If you haven't started with NoLoco, you can get started with a free trial with the link in the description below. One of the things that makes NoLoco unique is how they actually connect to your different backend data source. So for a lot of front-end application builders, they're in this blue box here, the front-end application. And if you connect to a backend, let's say like Airtable or something else, you've got the backend database, which is owned by this other vendor. And you're using the APIs provided by that vendor to pull information to the front-end. And this is something that happens in real time. Typically, you're saying, hey, you load this website. We're going to make a call into the back end to pull the information and show it to the user. But the problem sometimes is that those front end tools have no control over what happens in the back end or the API layer. So they don't have a lot of control when it comes to the data that they're presenting you. They only handle those permissions at the presentation or the UI level. What makes no low code different is they have their own database baked into their application. You can use their own no loco tables natively, or you can still connect to third-party data sources like a Postgres database or to Airtable. And they handle that syncing to that database automatically. But now when it comes to handling permissions, they've got full control over what happens in their backend and the API layer, which means you have more configuration possibilities when it comes to permissions. So now that I got the nerdy slides out of the way, what does that mean for you? Well, typically when it comes to permissions, a lot of front end tools can filter to see only your records, the records that you own. You can have limits to which pages in the application a user can access and down to the component level as well. And then we can also have role-based access where we can create some type of user role that controls what we can see. What many of these applications are not able to do is what NoLoco can, which is to say we can actually limit the records that a user can read, that they can edit, that they can create, and they can delete. We get more of those CRUD permissions and we can get down to things like field level permissions as well. So let's see some of this in action inside of NoLoco. So from the high level, what we can say is we've got certain pages in our applications. Maybe we want projects and work items only to be visible to certain individuals. And so what we can do here, we can click on our visibility settings, and this gives us some options to be able to see by user type and by user role. So we could first of all say, hey, all user types can see this information. We could say only the internal users, the people on our domain, the people in our team can actually see it versus our clients, our external users. So we can choose that. And maybe I want to say only internal users can see it. And on top of that, only people with these specific roles here. So we'll say only team admins can see it. Now, a couple of the things I really love about NoLoco is how we can see the changes that we're making here in the back end. And really, it's how it's displayed on the front end as well. So we don't have to navigate between different experiences. We can simply toggle on and off whether we're in build mode or whether we are in the edit mode. We also have the ability to toggle between different users or to be able to impersonate them to view it as they would. So I can click down here. And if we view this as Stephen McDonald, who is a team member, but he's not that team admin, look over at the left-hand navigation, that information disappears. He can't see those pages. And because I'm a team admin, if I select myself, now I'm able to see that page, that folder, that collection of work items, and all of the sub pages underneath. Now, when it comes to looking at the projects themselves, we might want to only see the projects that we own. And to do that, we can click on our projects here. This opens up before we looked at our visibility settings. Now we're looking at configuration settings and we can add a filter to it. So are we looking at all of the projects by default or do we want to add our own filter? And in this case, I'm going to configure this so that only the projects that are linked to my user are going to be visible. So now if we're logged in as Kim, we can see only the pictures where Kim is the project lead. Now we can also configure our own user role. So at the beginning, you saw how we had a team admin and a team member. Now, if we click on settings and go to user roles, we can actually create our own user roles. And some of these come out of the box, but you can add your own custom roles as well. 
This here is not to actually give the granular permissions. We're going to do that in a moment, but here's where we can configure these roles to give them different names. So maybe you say, here's an accountant on the team. Here's the project manager on the team so that we can use these roles later on when we're building out those permissions. Now in our data section, we can click on one of our tables and enable permissions. And what this lets us do is we can actually create multiple groups of permissions. Here's where if we created that project manager or that accountant role, we could choose from those roles to define this permission set. And this is the advantage of no loco being able to interact at that database layer is that we're able to change our actual read, update, and create permissions all the way down to the field level. So these are field level permissions where we can say, hey, you only can see the status, you can't actually change the status. But we can take that even a step further because up here you'll notice this toggle to say, should these users have access to all records? And if we turn that off, we could create a new rule here. So we could say something like, you can only see the invoices before they've been invoiced to the client. At the point they've been invoiced to the client, that project manager can no longer see it. It moves over to the accounting team. And by creating multiple layers of permissions, again, it's not just one set of permissions you can have, you can create multiple that's how you get that extra layer of configurability inside of NoLoco. Get started with NoLoco with the link in the description below. And if you have any questions about NoLoco and getting started, feel free to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com.